Okay, well, the only person we're missing is Senator White, and I know she knows about the meeting, so hopefully she'll join us. Uh, it might be helpful just to go around the table and introduce each other, ourselves. Some of us have been on this committee. We have other new faces. Uh, I'm Brian Collimore, one of the state senators from Rutland County. Going this way? Sure. Okay. Nathan Townsend, state representative from South Burlington. Jessica Brown, um, state representative from Shelburne. Alice Lucca, Senator for Windsor County and a couple other towns out of the county. Uh, Drew Ressley, I'm here as a representative of the Agency of Human Services. I'm Sue Zeller, I'm the State Chief Performance Officer and the Governor's appointee on this committee. John Blasick, I'm a State Representative for Milton. Randy Brock, State Senator for Franklin County and Alberg. And on the phone? Hi, this is Emily Kornheiser, State Representative from Brattleboro okay. and currently in Washington, D.C. Betsy Ann Rask is uh, sitting to the right of uh, Drew. So we're together to talk a little bit about the training. Um, the last time we met, I think we were in Senate Government Operations, and this is something that we have uh, hoped to get accomplished for, gosh, the last two years, three years. Um, this is sort of a committee, I think, that has had stops and starts along the way in terms of uh, being able to get buy-in from all 180 legislators. So today is focused on uh, a renewed effort, if you will, to, uh, to get some training for legislators. Um, yes? And, and part of that being that we have so many brand new people within the, the 180 who have never gone through any version of training for the Yep. Results-based accountability. So bring everybody up to speed and reminders for the folks wearing the older hats. So John, Randy, and Alice, I know, have not undergone any training in the in this area, correct? Not with Vermont. I have elsewhere. Okay. And Emily, are, are, did you go through anything? <clears throat> yeah, I'm actually an RBA trainer. Oh, that's right. Oh, mm -hmm. Representative Townsend did let me know that. And I think Senator White has also uh, gone through some of the training. So, um, Drew and Sue are here to help us along, because I think without their assistance we'd be somewhat rudderless. Um, so I want to thank them both for, for being here. And um, I'll just open up the, the floor to anybody that wants to uh, chip in. I just wanted to say quick, as off the gate here or whatever, that I'd cross out RBA training and not put it on anything any long, if at all, if we can, because we know that legislators glaze over when they see those initials. And so I've spoken with Drew about that a bit, that we need to come up with a different name for this training. Um, and maybe not even call it a training, maybe call it a workshop or something like that. But um, I think it's really important that we try and move away a bit from the whole RBA. Well, that's very interesting because um, I just spent um, an hour and a half yesterday on the phone with the province of Ontario with their um, children and family um, and business office people who are trying to um, they're looking at what other what states are doing, and and they're referring to it as, as outcomes based, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is at least that gets us away from the RBA word or acronym, but yet it still stays consistent with the language that we use. I I think that it's wise to um, be as as free as jargon, mm -hmm. free of jargon as possible, and to focus on the principles and spirit mm -hmm. behind the work. And I think that um, has another benefit, which is acting as an even broader umbrella for methodologies that can include but are not mm -hmm. exclusive to results-based accountability. And one of the reasons why I think that's critical is because Vermont has a history of using RBA that is actually <coughs> quite steeped in not always well, it's steeped in the relationship between um, funders and fundees. So the United Ways in Vermont use results-based accountability as part of their accountability mechanism for grants. The Agency of Human Services, which is undergoing a grants management reform, will also be using results-based accountability. And I think it's, it's correct. I, yeah, I think it's correct, um, as Representative Brumstead stated, to 
pitch this and do this in a way that is larger than RBA, but to, mm -hmm. to keep mm -hmm. space reserved for the fact that some methodology, some language, some jargon actually does work quite well in the state, and that's an asset we should continue to support. So I agree. Let's, let's not use the RBA language when we talk about the types of skills we're trying to develop in the legislature and across the executive <coughs> branch. Let's use, not use lean language. Let's try to be methodology agnostic. Right. Um, and I hope that this workshop series that we will talk about today um, does that. Even within the administration, we started um, we're if, with the Scott administration of expanding um, the use of, uh, of you know, outcomes and indicators down to the program level by also incorporated, you know, lean. And so we've rebranded all of it just simply continuous improvement <coughs> because um, t uh, two reasons. One, um, uh, as the chief performance officer, I want all of this initiative and all the training we're doing, we've trained over, we've trained over a thousand employees in the basic. I wanted to outlast, uh, outlast the Scott administration and not um, have happen what happened with the previous, you know, worthwhile but maybe not as um, knowledgeably created effort, which was challenges for change, you know, which Governor Shumlin threw out on day one of his administration. So all the effort that we've put in all over all these years, my five years as CPO, I really like to have this embedded in the culture both of the legislature and the administration. And so one of the ways you do that is you don't brand it with a particular um, initiative name or, you know, program or something. It's just part of what you do. I think that's a really important point, Sue, and talking about impact and accountability in the legislature, I think, can help us not just move toward performance improvement, which is important, but also to really clearly articulate with each other why we're doing what we're doing and what our goals are, so that we can have conversations that are more focused in order to both um, preserve resources within the building, but also clarify intent better when whatever we're doing leaves the building. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Because yeah. everyone understands account whether or not the question is government accountable and are we right. how are we doing on mm -hmm. performance? I right. mean I think every mm -hmm. every all of our constituents as well mm -hmm. as the people in the building and that's what really matters. Right. So a if I could, just a couple of words mm -hmm. that I think are important. You mentioned the workshop series. Mm -hmm. Series, mm -hmm. not the workshop. Right. Mm -hmm. And you use the terminology, so um, continuous mm -hmm. uh, improvement. improvement. Yeah. Uh, right. So both yes. underscoring that this is not, the work is not a one shot kind That's of right. deal that That's we're right. uh, envisioning. That's yeah. right. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what I've just passed out, and Emily, you have this, um, I know that you have access to this as well. Um, is kind of an overview of what Representative Brumstead, Kornheiser, and I have been talking about relative to this series. And this launched at our last conversation that I think Representative Townsend just mentioned, the last time this group was together down in the government operations, Senate Government Operations Committee room. We talked about wouldn't it be great if we had basically a couple of opportunities for engaging legislators in the fall and winter. And so that's what's here. Um, impact and accountability, rather than using the language of RBA, um, using inquiry and data to make responsive, responsible policy. Mm -hmm. So this is basically the idea that um, asking better questions and thinking up front about the data or the possibility of measurable change over time, thinking about that up front is going to help make sure that the legislation passed here and that and the implications for the executive branch are well understood and that we really can really can account over time for the changes that are <coughs> happening, whether those are what we anticipated and intended or not, and that that will be instructive towards guiding policy change in the future. Um, we want to make this as applied as possible, so not spending a lot of time Not when you say this. This referring to engagement opportunities. So this workshop series that we're calling it. We want to make sure that people are actually practicing and applying concepts and tools together, rather than just hearing concepts um, or being taught 
new language um, so that when we all walk through each of these sections but I hope that you'll see that this is really about using real examples of um, legislative language welcome Senator White Sorry. Oh, sorry. more construction than I thought <laughs> well that's what our summers are known for, right? I know. Well, we can't do it in the winter. <laughs> no, right. We're spending that money on that's right. Right. Yeah. construction is measurable too. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's an impact. <laughs> like the big hole coming in is gone. <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you. So we were just starting to move through, and you came here at a perfect time. Oh, um, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what a sort of overall design could be for a couple of um, legislative workshops, workshop series starting in the fall that would be um, about practicing new concepts and skills associated with impact and accountability, broader than RBA, more about the principles, spirit, and actual work that we can do together in the state house. Um, so the intent that I've written here does um, is intended to convey a role for the Government Accountability Committee so that there is a broad benefit, which is just for legislators in the building, but also that the Government Accountability Committee is seen as a resource for this work moving mm -hmm. forward, is seen as the site for champions to come together and to talk about government mm -hmm. accountability, and that people start to see this, this group as an opportunity in the new way. Um, we've talked a lot on this committee, and you've written in your reports about <coughs> the possibility of using performance notes um, as a way to ensure that there's measurable accountability toward the intent of bills that are passed. This is also an opportunity for us to talk about and actually practice what it could look like to use a performance note in sort of a mock way. Um, so another intention here is that we create a platform for people to have conversations about what would be small innovations that are totally within our capacity to do that might actually help and support Ledge Council to do their work too, um, that we can just try out in a space and that the Government Accountability Committee could be sort of advising around. Um, and then of course, these workshop series are always an opportunity to promote a shared language so that you could see in the future, you know, we've talked about the idea that there is a champion or multiple champions on every committee that is deeply interested in um, committee hearings mm -hmm. and bills moving through that are sound and that actually do demonstrate accountability and represent taking account accountability. So um, this first little grid that you see here, the first table, is really just a super high level overview of what are we talking about when we say workshops, when might they be, who would come, who would host, and who would facilitate. Um, so what you see is, in the fall, a one-day impact and accountability workshop. Any interested legislator from either chamber could attend. Um, the point would be, um, oh, sorry, not the point, but a way to get people there, mm -hmm. ideally, would be for legislative leadership to invite people from both parties. As we know, accountability is a totally nonpartisan issue. Um, and so it would be amazing if we had invitations coming from everyone, to everyone. Um, the host, in general, we're thinking about as just being the Government Accountability Committee. It would be great to have the entire committee actually be able to attend. Um, and certainly there's opportunity for introductions and closing by members of the, by members of the committee. You see a question mark here that I talked to Betsy Ann about briefly <laughs> around Ledge Council. Mm -hmm. Could Ledge Council be a partner in hosting um, these mm -hmm. workshops, given that so much about Ledge, Ledge Council Council is doing um, is about drafting bills, helping to suss out the language of intent, um, and interacting with legislators from the earliest point in the draft request process, um, where a lot of this work could start to be done up front. So that's really Can I jump in for just one second here? Yeah. Um, I think it's really, and hi Jeanette, this is Emily on the phone. Um, I I think it's really important this um, idea around just having it, um, having this first training be or workshop be longer and voluntary, because it's an opportunity for us to build more committed champions that we can continue to loop back to throughout the rest of the session. And so that the goal of this workshop is really to build um, build our bench of champions and really empower them to be thinking about this in a more holistic way. 
And just to add on to that, to what Emily just said, we I had started last year talking to people in every committee about being that champion on the House mm -hmm. side. And so my thought would be, once we have a date, that I would call those people individually and just say, hey, I know that you agreed mm -hmm. to this last year, and this would be a great workshop if there's any way that you can make it for you to come to, so that we try to get those champions to be at the table for that meeting, at the very least. Um, but anyhow. <clears throat> can you give me a little more idea of what the champion would do? I'm, I'm thinking of, uh, obviously I don't take the train. If but, it is. Oh, <laughs> that's true. But how does it work in terms of, you know, if you have a, a committee that operates pretty much on it's a communal decision as to which bills you take up, and then there's this person who's, mm -hmm. somebody said championing, mm -hmm. who's championing, championing, whatever it is, <laughs> a certain bill, but not perhaps their own, of course. And I'm wondering, how does that work in terms of if the committee is thinking differently? Mm -hmm. I would say it's not about, the champion isn't about um, championing a bill. What they're there to do is to be the person in the room who begins to ask questions with an accountability frame in mind. So they ask, um, so I think a few of us sort of already do this um, even by accident without doing it explicitly. So what is the clear intent of this bill? Um, how will we know if we do this well? In the sunset provision, are we asking the right questions to understand what we need to know about results and outcomes? So it's the person on that committee who is really sort of coaching the larger group to be asking those specific questions whenever there's a bill on the table. Right, it doesn't enter in at all to um, right. priority ranking or any of that. Right. It's more, are, is this bill having the impact we hoped it would have? And um, how are we going to judge that? And also talking with people like Drew, which I did on the child care bill, was going to Drew and saying, how are we going to measure this? How will we know if we did a good job or not? I mean, I wanted us to know, is this new funding actually having the impact we hope it will have? And if it isn't, is there going to be a way for us to tweak it so that we can get it right? Mm -hmm. And so we talked about that, and we put that in a section of the bill. Um, mm -hmm. And so... And, and I would even say that, I mean, the, you know, the, we have a lot of history of really, um, you know, well-meaning bills being passed, and, but they're not always clear on what the legislat legislature's intent is for, um, for success. What are the success? So they get handed to the administration, and, you know, they, you sit here and you scratch your head and you go, well, okay, I guess we'll build this program. And, and we don't come back, we, the proverbial editorial we, the administration comes back a year later and the legislature is like, well, that's not really what we were looking for you to do. So I think um, adding the, the clear intent language and adding measures that, oh, so you're looking for us to reduce XYZ, TMDLs, by 15% then the administration knows what the expectations are and they already know on what basis their success will be um, be reported. So it's not as much of a guessing game as it has often been for you know for both parties. It's also logistics. So for mm -hmm. example, last year we printed up these little colorful cards and <laughs> colorful posters and it was just getting them out there. So you give them to the champion, they pass them out, and then talk to the committee about what they mean and why we have them and all of that. That's what we did on the House side. I'm not sure how it went on the Senate side, but. Um, you do that. We stuck, we stuck them in front of us. Yeah, so that's good, too. I mean, I think whatever way it takes to get people talking about this is a positive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It might be helpful uh, for those that weren't with us last year. I remember a meeting where we sat around and we took, mm -hmm. and forgive me, I'm not going to remember specifics, but two bills, mm -hmm. and we went through it. Yep. Do yes. you remember what was it? Raising the or, uh, were, smoking one was, age. Yeah, one was very straightforward, and then the other one was a more complicated bill. Was it ethics? I think. Ethics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, and we actually intend to do that same process in these workshops. Okay. So to actually have bill, um, <coughs> we talked about statutes that, or language that hasn't been passed, right? Mm -hmm. So we would, have, we would have that again. We would have bills that we could work in small groups mm -hmm. um, to actually practice a process around. Mm -hmm. And I think 
Um, I'm glad that I'm glad that Emily underscored how important it is that the first training, which we actually really are hoping is a full day, and should have said shrink training. It's really a workshop. Um, be filled with people that are genuinely interested, who see government accountability as a fundamental part of what they're trying to do in the state house, who believe that it's it's a winning message when they talk to their constituents about why they're here, that it like is the is an important intersectional issue across their their interest areas. And so um, those champions, I hope, we would actually be able to empower within the workshop series to then in the winter, when we do a two hour um, impact and accountability workshop, um, those champions can actually help facilitate so that they will actually be playing out what it looks like to support their colleagues in working through certain issues or talking about certain issues using different tools. And winter means during session? I'm not sure. I left these broad intentionally because I don't know what you would all advise as the best time to come together to do this. But yes, and then we talked about um, a follow-up convening also in the winter um, where, again, interested legislators, hopefully champions, again, this, this would be the champions' third engagement with this and with us mm -hmm. as a committee or you as a committee would come together um, and really think more specifically about how do we want this to play out over the session. And so in terms of timing, to answer your question specifically, I'd open that back up to all of you. When would be the best time to do a full day? When would be the best time to do a two hour, where hopefully we get broader engagement, but for a shorter period of time? And then a follow up. Or you don't have to answer that right now, but it is an open question. Yeah. If I could just toss on the table um, before we um, get into the, the timing question. Would there be something to be gained? It's a good idea, bad idea. Um, since at least in the House we have champions already pretty much identified, <laughs> understanding yeah. it's not 100 percent, but you know, yeah. real yeah. effort was put into that, um, to encourage the champions to reach out to a committee member, a fellow committee mm. member, to come along yeah. also. The they would have some Maybe. sense as to who on the committee uh, might be a likely prospect that's as great, opposed yeah. to coming along, mm -hmm. you know, with a leash on, screaming, and that's why men wear ties. <laughs> oh my! I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> but um, hmm. and that would help build. It would seem I to think that's a the, wonderful the idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, Representative Kornheiser, did you have thoughts about timing? I feel like I may have remembered you suggesting. I think we were talking about, I mean, whenever in the fall makes sense for people. I think um, sort of November, December, people are starting to think more about going back to work than in September, October. Yeah. So we want it to be close enough that it feels um, relevant for people who really just dive back into their homeland. And then in the, for the shorter um, everyone training, we were talking about trying to integrate it into that first week yeah. when there's sort of more um, short-term mandatory trainings yeah. Yeah. and seeing if we can mix it in with something there and definitely talking to leadership sooner rather than later to see if that's possible. So, so in mid-November um, of the second year, you know, sec right before the second session of the biennium, Joint Fiscal and Ledge Council mm -hmm. do a um, you know, the first year it's the new member orientation, but the second year it's just a briefing on where the state's at mm -hmm. and, you know, what's going on. And so, um, so lots of members come, not all of them come, but lots of <coughs> members come for that day. So maybe there's a way to work that so they might stay or or you don't or, you know whether you don't want to be that close to that day or whether you do I mean for the shorter session for the shorter session yeah I know I mean for the the day long you know could you oh could you make it to, you know the day before or the day after would that be too much or would it be better to not have it be close to that other day if I had someone with a full-time job, yeah. having it separated would make it much easier for me. Yeah. Was that what you were about to say, Jeanette? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, so to me, it seems like if we don't want to worry too much about weather, we might want to try the first week in November. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
When is the other one traditionally? The, what it's usually around the 15th, the 17th, of something like that, yes. of November, yes. yeah. Okay. Because mm -hmm. it, it's the same time as the one the first year, and that has to be after elections. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's usually like the beginning of the third week, something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. that first week in November could work pretty well. Mm -hmm. It would be safe. Mm -hmm. And then the one hour workshop. Yeah, or two hours. Two hour. um, so we we convene again on a Wednesday, if I'm remembering correctly. No, no the second no. year on a Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Tuesday. That's right. And I'm not sure. It, so it should be Tuesday, the first a seventh. Yeah. Right. Yes. I think it. I think that's yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the seventh. Mm -hmm. yeah. The seventh. Yep. Hmm. <coughs> now, there's advantages to. Going right for it on that Tuesday, but there's probably disadvantages too. Yep. Yeah. Really All people want to do is get out. I wonder, do you have a sense of what the other shorter trainings are? Like, I wonder if, in terms of content, there's a place that it makes more sense and might sink in or be more relevant. Like, I wonder if there are train. Is there any sort of training about how ledge council works? No, we no. do that at the beginning. At the very beginning. beginning. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Of course. The second year, I mean, committees are already established, so yeah. there's none yeah. of that yeah. 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 waiting they've, around. They've already got bills sitting there. Right. right. And actually, oh, House of Probes and right. House of Probes starts in December. They start. You know, we do doing December sixteenth. Yes, actually. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Happen to know, <clears throat> December sixteenth. That week. We're there. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't know Wednesday or Thursday that week maybe. By Which then, you've got committee well, meetings, Thursday too. is the um, uh, state of the state oh, yeah. of that week. So the seventh, you you come in, and then the ninth is the state of the state. Wow. Mm -hmm. And is the state of the state in the morning? It's 2 o'clock. Yeah. It's 2 o'clock. Yeah, it's usually, it's usually at 2 o'clock, um, you know, an hour, <coughs> hour and a half, something like that. So if our... Afternoon committees are going to lose that day. Let's mm -hmm. make that's our morning, morning committees <laughs> lose that day too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Do the two. I, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're thinking like 9:30, 10 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On that Thursday. Right. And then yeah. they'll be out for lunch, and then go to the uh, yep. those who wish to will go to the state of the state. Mm -hmm. And most people will attend that, yes. which, say, which yeah. means you have a mm -hmm. better happens. chance of a pool mm -hmm. of people that would be available. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can work on it before we come back. Mm -hmm. I'll split everyone up and make it actually mm -hmm. worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. January 8th. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know about fixing the date on the third one. That might be a kind of a TBA. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I would do. Yeah. Okay, well, that seems good. So we think in general the first week of November... It, and then the it, same, yeah. It, it, before we leave that third meeting entirely, would there be anything to be gained by at least thinking, do we want to do it before town meeting day, mm -hmm. week, oh, good point. break, or after? Yeah. So yeah. To, to at least help yeah. frame our thinking before as a community. It would, mm -hmm. I think yeah. for you would be ideal, but if it is after, it has to be immediately after. Yeah. Because what does I mean? Because things really get nutty, as yeah. you all well know. And they do right before, too. But mm -hmm. the nice part about doing it right before is that you could ask <coughs> questions that would help you when you go to town meeting mm -hmm. to talk mm -hmm. about how effective mm -hmm. state government is. Mm -hmm. And here's an example. <laughs> so I think I was going to, get to a similar place in my mm -hmm. mind. I think that there's benefit to doing the follow-up close, closely following the two hour when mm -hmm. a bigger group of people comes together mm -hmm. because that group of champions can then really rebuild the community that they started <coughs> to build in that first full day where they're thinking what worked well, what didn't work well, do people feel jazzed, who should we reach out to? And then I, I agree that maybe it would be worthwhile to schedule a couple of follow-ups including right before a town meeting where people can start thinking <coughs> together, how do I want to present what we did? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit difficult to schedule much of anything that week before town meeting because um, you have to get your bills done. Right. Right. So it's, I mean, we're already meeting into the evening. So. Right, right, right. Kind of. Yes. I guess I was thinking even more informally in some way, uh -huh. like a lunch or, mm -hmm. but even that might be too difficult to, I know that there's a lot that starts to fill your calendars. Right. So. And especially since it's the second year. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. 
Oh, that's right. Anything that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Doesn't but I, happen. I do think well, it's good to if let we it at least happen. think mm -hmm. about, as an example, over lunch that week, some day. But we're at least forcing ourselves to not leave it totally mm -hmm. amorphous. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. And everything else gets scheduled in. <laughs> uh, seriously, right. everything else gets yeah. scheduled. It's a matter of priorities right. as to right. whether or not we think a, a lunch meeting around this issue, as an example, mm -hmm. is is important enough to make sure it happens. And I think if you know if you get it on the schedule, at least it's there. It might have to get moved, but um, it, it won't be something coming in at the end, like you know, oh now you're trying to schedule some new yeah. thing. Yeah. It will be on this schedule. I also wonder if after the full day, mm -hmm. we're hosts <coughs> and we're going to be hosting the two hour, mm -hmm. that we should debrief as the hosts with, with Betsy too, as the Ledge Council, just to say how did it go mm -hmm. and what do we want to, what do we need to be sure that we're um, pushing or not, you know, the things that people really didn't seem to connect with at the the big one, even though it's only two hours, it will be where we hit the most people. Yeah, I think if possible, at least, it would be wise to schedule an additional hour past when all the participants will be there for both the one full day and the two hour. So that for GAC members, it might mm -hmm. actually be three hours where we come together afterwards and spend time debriefing. Mm -hmm. Or even after the state of the state, mm -hmm. where we talk about what came up during the state of the state that is interesting from the from this perspective and use mm -hmm. it as another example. Right, that's but true. I do agree with you that with scheduling mm -hmm. debrief to mm -hmm. say, how did it go? What should we focus on given what happened? Even if it's a conference call. Yeah. You know, if we yep. do it, mm -hmm. I think it'll matter. Yeah. I would oh. definitely oh I would definitely plan to attend these. I want to be kept in the loop and I'm even trying to I think it would be beneficial for one or more of our legal supervisors to also attend so they can be kept in the loop about what's being proposed because this would change the way we do our job or it could have at least some minor change in how we do our job. Um, but I don't think we could be listed as a host because mm -hmm. that seems to imply that we are pushing this as a policy mm -hmm. change and mm -hmm. budget council cannot propose mm -hmm. policy changes. Mm -hmm. But I thank you because mm -hmm. um, it will impact the yes. way that we do our job. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you for thinking of us and um, wanting us to attend and yeah. budget council will be represented there. That's probably the right approach. And I know you had mentioned at one time that um, ledge council every now and then has full staff meetings. Yeah. And I wonder if it would be even useful if we had like an abbreviated just dialogue to have with Reg Council before in case other people want to attend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so to follow up a little bit, I'm sorry, Mina, go ahead. You go ahead. <coughs> Not to put you on the spot, <coughs> but if someone were to ask you, um, how many of the members of Ledge Council are sort of understanding this? We what might you answer? <laughs> One. My well, there's have, me. Then my yeah. colleagues have a general idea. I have done an RBA slash GAC training for them. Oh, okay. Um, oh, it I was didn't know that. it was a couple of years ago. We did it as uh, I did it as a continuing legal education course. Mm -hmm. um, just I think it was half hour overview of RBA generally and the work of the GAC. That was a couple of years ago. Um, so my colleagues they would want a refresher. Mm -hmm. It would be yeah. helpful for them to have okay. a refresher. That's great. Yeah. And, you know, I, again, not to put you on the spot, last thing in the world you understand that I would want. But I heard the words policy change, and um, wouldn't be the first time I would be naive about something. But it, I'm having trouble seeing how um, accountability, this work around accountability, is actually a policy change, given that it's seated within legislation that was passed. I think it's because it is a suggestion to do legislative work differently. Mm. Right. And you might agree with it changing, but not all of your colleagues are going to agree. There's going to be differences of opinion as to whether legislators should use something like a performance note in legislation. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do think it is a decision about how legislative work should be conducted and that's not for ledge council to decide. It's for legislators to decide, like you decide what you want in your bill. We don't recommend a policy that you want to put in your right. bill. 
So that's helpful to, to me at any rate, and we know even within our committee mm -hmm. that there has been disagreement mm -hmm. with regard to performance notes as just mm -hmm. one example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I understand I, I understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. And I also think lunch council has some I there's some things going on as well because last year there were so many bills in the house introduced and so there's been some thought and this might play into that a little bit. It might be helpful. You mean by restricting the number of bills a person can put in? No, no, but by one of the things when you ask the intent question, you know, clarifying legislative <coughs> intent, when ledge council he, uh, hears that, it might help them to think about, mm -hmm. oh, this is the same legislative intent, intent that five other legislators have come to me with this year. Maybe I should connect them. And they do that now. They, yeah. can they, they, they do that by now with permission, right? Yeah. Only with permission, with permission. And it doesn't happen. Like but last we did, year, we had, a we lot had heard that there were 11 plastic bag bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 11. That said almost yeah. the same thing. Almost. No surprise, people are trying to. I know, but they could have been had. Mm -hmm. They could have if the people agreed. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So, and so in addition to, it's a useful framework for helping people collaborate. It's also a useful framework for having people understand whether for actually articulating their own thoughts well enough to sometimes realize that a bill isn't worth putting in. So we know that in Connecticut, when they added performance notes, the number of bills they had went down. And who knows what the actual reason was, um, but we know that there was an outcome that we're actually interested in. Is Connecticut the only state, Emily, that does that, to your knowledge? I do not know. No, at least at NCSL. Is anyone going to NCSL actually this year? And they could check no, this I am. Out. I am. Maybe you could check on this. But um, and when I was there, Emily's going to. Oh, good, saying. Emily. That's great. And um, when I went, when would that have been? Three couple years, years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah a couple two years, years ago. Anyway, yeah. There were, I think, six states, and each one was at a different mm -hmm. level of moving along. Mm -hmm. That's where the performance note idea came from. So have we actually decided that we're going to do performance notes on every bill and no. No. what that means? No. no. Okay. No. We're just trying to encourage the use, mm -hmm. but not. And again, for new members, maybe we can tell people what that means. Yeah, because I'm a little right. unclear about it still. Mm -hmm. After Can all this time. Care as an example? Yeah. Yeah, why don't you... Okay. Talk it through because I don't want to... Mm -hmm. So, Representative Bramstead, after the NCAL um, conference a couple years ago, NCIL, right? NCSL. NCSL, whoops, of course. Um, Starting to sound like sports. Yeah. Um, <laughs> came to, um, or heard about Utah, I think it was, yeah. doing performance notes. Um, and what that basically amounted to was a little piece of language that moved along with the bill, similar, I think, to how a fiscal note could work. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that's useful in introducing the bill to committees, and that could even, I think, be embedded into the language of the bill if appropriate. Um, and what it does is essentially explicitly name is there a measurable issue? Is there some baseline that this? Um, statutory change would be in response to? Are we trying to make a change to something that we recognize as a measurable problem, let's say, a trend we're trying to shift? That's one way of looking at it. Another way is, is, is this bill intending to make change that we believe is measurable? So how will we actually understand if this bill has made a difference, basically? Has it had the... <coughs> Um, <coughs> intended population impact, so the tobacco, raising the tobacco right. age would in theory um, be evident in the tobacco cessation rate right. or the number percent of kids under 18 that are smoking cigarettes. Um, there may also be an intended change on a programmatic outcome. So if we make a change to the reach up program, what do we anticipate is going to be the measurable impact of that? Will we be able to understand it? We did. We used the performance note um, principle. Really applied it to the child care legislation to understand if we made this type of investment and if we changed um, the sliding scale in this way and the eligibility criteria in this way, we would hope to see this, this, and this measure improve over time, change over time. So it was a way of identifying you know one to three measures, and that intends 
to associate legislative intent with something that's actually measurable so that we can demonstrate change over time, but also learn from it because what we originally do may not have the impact that we want. <coughs> and then we learned learn. that was built right into the bill. bill. Right, we put in Where the last it? section. Oh, oh, it wasn't mm -hmm. like in the purpose or the intent, anything no, like that? No, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, the intent and the purpose in the bill was lengthier than normal only because we put seven bills together. That was another one where we had seven child care bills on our wall and we put them all together. So when we did the purpose, we really mm -hmm. made it say what the purpose was based on looking at all the purposes and tried to encompass what we really were trying to accomplish. And what I found very interesting, because I'm one of the big proponents of this, I mean, of these performance notes, was how difficult it was, because mm -hmm. we're not measuring everything we'd all like to be measuring, because it's expensive mm -hmm. um, to measure everything. Or we might not have the data, mm -hmm. or we just might not have the system set up to collect that data. And so there were part times, and um, Drew and I met quite a few times, and I was like, what do you mean we're not collecting that? No, we need to collect that. Um, and so we had to compromise, but it changed the bill a little bit, because what good is it to say we're going to do all this if there's no way for us to know that we're going to do all that? So, um, so we really worked together, and luckily um, Chairman Pugh was super supportive, as well as um, Chairman... Um, Ginny, <laughs> and she was too. And I went to them ahead of time and said, "This is why I've tweaked it a little bit, and this is what's important." And they they agreed. And so in the end, we ended up with not seven bills. We ended up with a really important bill. We spent a lot of money, and we can check it. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep an eye on it and see how we're doing. And I so, think I think one of the points that you're making also, and and the explanation that Drew gave. It's often that the measure is already an existing one that you know the de departments are tracking, or at least it's it's a um, you know a, a proxy measure that you can use. It doesn't. I think one of the things that that frightens people about uh, performance notes or having to do is they they think they have to invent everything new, and mm -hmm. and you don't, right? I mean, the child care bill. We we track lots of stuff on child care, so. You know, it's fairly often that whatever bill you're writing, the intent will be to change some of those um, measures. And or if most um, bills that come out of commerce, I would hope, are trying to, in, you know, grow the economy or do something positive for workforce development. And we track a lot of measures, and we may not be tracking a nuanced measure down to a particular, you know, sub-cohort of people. But um, I think if people understood that, that we do have a lot of measures and that most of, especially on our outcomes, our 10 outcomes in statute, that those are the, the needles on the dials that we most commonly want to move. Mm -hmm. I think what was hard for me is how do you prove that you've brought more young people here by having a good child care system mm -hmm. that supports families. That's really hard. It, it just isn't, we're not, it's not going to be easy because we could bring more people here for seven different bills that we passed last right. year. Right. We just don't know. No, but you know, that's where you have to just, um, for example, does to can tourism say that all the efforts they make definitively increase the people who stay at the hotel? Or the ski area, right? No, no. But you have to have, you know, you have, to, you know, there's a connection, and so um, it's almost like you, if you stopped, if you eliminated the Department of Tourism, I think we all know tourism would drop. So this so is it's actually, hard to, oh, you know, make that connection. Go ahead, Drew. I was yes. just going to say this conversation is actually a mm -hmm. great example of what specifically results-based accountability <laughs> tries mm -hmm. to flush out, mm -hmm. which is the idea that. Um, we spend a lot of time attempting to understand cause and effect related to the things that we're doing with a specific intervention and long-term, mm -hmm. much broader population mm -hmm. impacts. We know that there's a connection, but it's more useful to understand the specific impact of the things that we do if we measure in closer proximity to that intervention. And so, with the example of tourism, there are plenty of ways mm -hmm. that we can measure the efficacy of tourism towards doing what they intend that are a little bit closer to the programmatic impacts than the right. number of people moving to Vermont. 
But I think this is a discussion that we can play out in our one day. And I, I want to just emphasize that performance notes are one example of a tool that we could be using. And it's maybe more specific and defined than a tool um, to, to ask better questions or stronger, more data-driven questions in committee. But I want to pull our attention back to actually the first section of the um, second table. Mm -hmm which spells out basically the objectives for each one of these different workshops. And I just want to draw your attention to the second bullet in the objectives for the fall impact and accountability workshop, which is which tries to draw out a couple of specific legislative activities that might benefit from a, the impact and accountability frame, like Emily mentioned before. Um, in each of these areas, talking with constituents, clarifying and aligning legislative intent, all the way down to actually following up on implementation and results, the legislature is poised to think very critically about accountability and what is the frame that you're using. And so we want to be able to, in this one day workshop, actually practice out in some of these different arenas, how might you employ tools um, like the seven questions of RBA, for instance, or the three questions of RBA around performance measures. How would you um, ask maybe more broader intent so that everybody on the committee understands the purpose of a bill that's going to be introduced for the first time. Or if committee members have different understandings of what different state agencies or programs are responsible for, what are questions you can ask to get everybody on the same page? That type of thing. Um, you also see reviewing reports. So I know we've talked about in this committee before, I think last time we were all together, actually, how many reports come in from the executive branch. And I actually know this because I was just mining through to look for a couple specific ones. And it's incredible, the wealth of information that exists in those reports, but they're not always connected in a meaningful way. So what are some tools or practices that you could use to make sure that um, bills that are being drafted, if there's the opportunity to, are responsive to information that's already existing in the public sphere? So these are just a couple of examples, and I don't know that these are the only ones, but <coughs> Representative Brown, Seth Kornheiser, and I were thinking about these areas as interesting to practice. What would it look like as a champion to use mm -hmm. some of these tools? Um, and so performance notes are only one of those bullet points. So I just wanted to make that, mm -hmm. make that point. Mm -hmm. I think that doing performance notes well, and I think that could look like a bunch of different, like there could be a bunch of different ways of doing that, could have um, a ripple effect over across across some of these other areas too. Um, the collaboration point that's been talked about now, so many, many bills get introduced. I think Representative Brown said this said seven, there were seven mm -hmm. child care bills that some of them were able to be collapsed. What I understand from Betsy Ann and please is um, that there's kind of a um, protocol for introducing the possibility of that. You can say that there are other similar bills and would you like to see them or look at them. Mm -hmm. um, what we may be able to do in this workshop is create a different <coughs> spirit of collaboration mm -hmm. among these champions where mm -hmm. it's actually felt mm -hmm. individually like it would be a good idea for me to see who else has written a, paper, a plastic bag bill and whether we have similar mm -hmm. intents and could collaborate. Whether you want your name on the bill with another person that you can't stand, or you don't agree with the politics, there's a lot more to it. And you, a you lot more to it. You want to be the main sponsor you be because your constituents are yelling about it. Mm -hmm. yelling about it. So we know that yeah, we're in a political true. environment. This is not just about yeah, a stronger it's not just process. A Mm -hmm. collaborate here. Mm -hmm. And that's, of course, we know that to be true, but in some cases there may be interest and just not an understanding of power. I, think, I mean, I have to admit, any bill that I've ever had that someone else is putting in from Ledge Council, I've, I've heard there is another bill, they don't tell you who, and they say, mm -hmm. you know, would you be interested in mm -hmm. me sharing mm -hmm. with them that you're interested, or that you're interested with them? I've had that happen every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, drafting requests are confidential. It's attorney-client privilege, but that privilege can be waived. So we try mm -hmm. in Ledge Council to be consistent in saying when a legislator submits a draft request, if another legislator is similarly interested in this issue, would you be willing to allow me to share your name with him or her? And uh, that's how we can try to link members up. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes for whatever reason, a legislator might want to be the lead or mm -hmm. want to keep it quiet for now mm -hmm. that he or she is working on an issue. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that we're looking at, 
trying to be more consistent about. I mean, I think sometimes we get drafting requests on the fly, so it's not always easy to mm -hmm. um, remember to say that. Um, but we, overall, it, if legislators are willing to co-sponsor, it seems to just streamline the process. People can get together, show support for a general idea. It doesn't always work out. And this year, beginning this year, I guess, um, we need to have drafting requests in by whatever the date is in December. Yeah, right. right. And you meet that deadline or such as life. Um, <clears throat> the end of the first week. And uh, so, so the timing, the timing of this fall meeting falls in a good place with regard to that yeah. deadline. It occurs to me too that kind of the yin and yang of the situation. We're talking about performance measures and the ability to track a bill's intent with the result or the outcome. Right. But it also, if you look at the data long enough, can tell you about unintended consequences too, I think. Yes. If you really open that up and say, well, this is what we'd hope would happen, but look over here what happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, take the cigarette yeah. age mm -hmm. being pushed mm -hmm. to 21. What if we found three years later that there are more kids that are 20 that are smoking than there were before? Mm -hmm. Something's happened there that we didn't anticipate. Right. It's or just they stopped. The smoking went down, but they went down. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's right. It's about learning mm -hmm. and bringing more information. Accountability is the frame there, right. but it's still it's learning. So I think the opportunity to be able to follow up on the child care bill down the line, regardless of whether there were seven or one, mm -hmm. um, is is part of our interest here. Definitely. And we tried to make all the people who introduced those bills, and we, we put them on as original sponsors. Mm -hmm. so, so we had more than one original sponsor. Mm -hmm. Instead of just being a co-sponsor, mm -hmm. you know, we all signed those forms. It's a little different when you're... Maybe you guys don't do it that way in the Senate. We have these sheets that you just initial if you yeah, want to be. Yeah. Okay, so, but on the top, there's original sponsors. Oh, and so ours, the original just sponsors. sponsors. And mm -hmm. the, usually so just the, one person? Always. No, usually no, the, the person that introduced, that asked for the sponsor. drafting request has their name first, and then they're just alphabetical after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the, the same on ours. Except like ours, at least on the child care bill, we did make it really clear that these few were <coughs> you, the can, you can you can request. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that they absolutely. Were, they were. That's how. And then everybody, everybody else was alphabetical. Yeah. So I don't know. Made people feel a little better. Principles. I think it's worthwhile to talk a little bit about the history in this building, but also just in Vermont, in conversations about accountability and the different tools that are being used. Um, introducing a couple of different examples of legislation that we can work on in small groups, I think, yeah. can be critical. So if you have any that are coming to mind, um, it seems to me like I, I'm sort of leveraging um, Representative Brumstead and Kornheiser as my point people for this on the committee, if that's yeah. comfortable with all of you. But so maybe if ideas come up for you about legislation, that might be a good example. You can send them your way. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, and could we have clarification? Are we talking? I, I know this was mentioned before, but my ear wasn't mm -hmm. totally attuned. Is that are we interested in having as uh, you know uh, examples to work on legislation that is uh, already passed or that is about to go through the process potentially? I think both would be great. I mean, I can imagine that if we're halfway through a biennium. People may have legislation that didn't move last year that they want to improve. Is that true? Well, well they want to get get past. Past. Yeah. Yeah. They don't care. They're too big. Just not hanging on a lot of walls. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 But that they might want to prepare for a reintroduction of the language. Certainly not with negatives coming up. Well, what, you wouldn't yeah. reintroduce. No, uh, well, I'm not as familiar yeah. with the process. Okay. So you you just idea. take it up in the committee and start okay. hashing it out. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's and it. Mm -hmm. So would the sponsors of the bill be there for that? Not or not? Necessarily. not necessarily. They've already introduced it, yeah. and now it's, it's just there. done. Mm -hmm. Okay. But also, if I could, yeah. also, at least in, in my limited experience, um, if someone who has introduced a piece has suggested changes, yeah. mm -hmm. I've never known anybody to be shy about saying, right. this is what I had in my original draft. But 
I have evolved in my thinking and right. would offer that you consider blah 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 yeah. okay. in your deliberations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I, when we look at the bills, in my mind, it still gets really mushy when you talk about um, bills that don't seem to have that kind of very clear. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the child care bill put a lot of money into this. We hope for this, we hope for this. Ethics Commission, mm -hmm. what did we hope for? Did we hope that we'd have more reports, less reports, <laughs> yeah. less right. um, violations? Right. I, I, so th those well, kinds of well, bills seem yeah. to me mushier mm -hmm. and harder to, mm -hmm. harder to do this with. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when we do the bills, mm -hmm. I would suggest that we do maybe one bill that's really straightforward mm -hmm. and one bill that isn't. Mm -hmm. And so Matt, the ethics bill, the ethics commission is such a perfect example of where articulating performance measures and the thinking behind them can be so helpful. Because generally with anything like domestic violence or ethics violations, before you actually turn the curve on a culture change, which is what your ultimate goal is, right? Is to lower the things that people are complaining about, but almost always reporting spikes first. And so if you're articulating that in advance for people, when the reporting goes up, people don't panic because they know that that's sort of part of the theory of change that you're trying to push forward. And so that's a great example for us to use if we really want to help people understand this work. Mm -hmm. And on fiscal notes, can I ask? You don't have fiscal notes on every bill that no. has no. fiscal impact, right? Right. So, so well. it's not as if if you introduce the the uh, policy of doing performance notes, you could set some criteria about which bills, um, you know, what type of bill or what area. You know, you could start in one area. You could say, okay, we're going to work on healthcare bills, that, you know, with them, or you could say anything with an investment of more than X we're going to do, you know. So you, you, you don't do fiscal notes on everything that has a fiscal impact. You don't have to do performance notes on everything because that's a resource issue. You know, you don't want to overwhelm either legislators or leg council. Right. So you, you can pick and choose or develop a, a set of criteria about which kinds of bills you would put performance notes on so that so that you some of those you know even though you could improve them just having the conversation in those amorphous bills that you know or what did you call them squishy squishy mushy that was it mushy yeah so you know um maybe it's not a hard and fast rule for everything i mean maybe you have you develop some sort of policy on how you would implement performance. Or would you leave that up to the the sponsor and the, mm -hmm. the I, I mean, yep. with fiscal notes, the way mm -hmm. I understand them is that um, the sponsor can ask for a fiscal note, or the committee afterwards, mm -hmm. once you get the bill, mm -hmm. can ask for a fiscal note. Yeah, I think right. exactly. yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, we don't. But that is a policy, isn't it? That's, that's the policy. The policy is you leave it up to the. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see what you mean. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. At yeah. the same mm -hmm. time, one of the last things I would suggest that one wants to have happen mm -hmm. is if you're deal if you're presenting a bill on the floor that has a fiscal impact and you're asked did you yeah. where is the fiscal note right. on this and you say oh we didn't ask for one there's death right there <laughs> well that's the reporter <laughs> and the committee's problem yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but right. I'm just saying I, I think it's rare maybe I've been living in a cave here but um, <laughs> I think it's somewhat rare that if a bill has a fiscal impact that somebody hasn't asked at joint fiscal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. show us what the mm -hmm. impact is so as to be prepared, mm -hmm. not only so that the entity working on it, the committee working on it knows what the yeah. heck they're dealing with, but that mm -hmm. they're prepared mm -hmm. for a, a question mm -hmm. on the floor if the fiscal uh, note hasn't already been put <coughs> on people's desks. Right. right. And, and I'm sure that the mm -hmm. fiscal yeah. note, it, it just in the way that you described it, probably arose out of someone saying it would make sense if we did this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that it actually served a purpose and was useful. And I think we could play the same card here, mm -hmm. which is if a performance note is seen as an extra thing, 
and it's not actually helpful to anyone in explaining yeah. the intent of the bill mm -hmm. or in following up on the bill later, then I don't think it's going to catch on. Right. Right. But if we position this as something that we think is an asset, part of a theory of change toward better understanding if the work we're doing is actually paying off for people, right. then I think that that might work well right. better. This is a <laughs> really important point, too, I think. One of the challenges our side had, I think, was the pushback because the, the perception was, oh my goodness, this is going to completely change life as we know it, mm -hmm. because every bill that's introduced is going to have this thing. And, and I got personally yeah. some pushback and said, wait a minute, what, are you, what is that committee mm -hmm. doing over there? Mm -hmm. And so I think it is important that we make it clear that this isn't going to be 100%, that, that there will there'll be bills right. where this just that's doesn't apply and doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. Mm -hmm. But there's other bills where it, it isn't happening now, and we probably should do it. Right. What this, I think, really means is not so much performance notes, fiscal notes, and so on, but it's a change in the way we think about mm -hmm. what we're doing. And that's what I think you're trying to instill, yeah. is that you apply these principles of thought when you develop bills and when you're passing them. We talk about fiscal notes so often, and the fiscal notes, at least in my experience, are so often limited mm -hmm. to this is the cost to right. government right. for doing this, mm -hmm. but we rarely think about the cost to the public <laughs> of doing it in terms of, let's say you change an automobile registration. We know it's going to cost uh, the Agency of Transportation so much to do it. It's going to cost the Department of Motor Vehicles so much to do it. Uh, it's going to have potentially a tax impact in terms of, 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 of fines in the Judicial Bureau, but we don't think about how much extra time it's going to take each individual to comply with the thing that we do, and that's also part of performance yeah. yes. that we need to be thinking about. That's right. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. something you said that is so important to all of this is that it's about a change in frame and a change mm -hmm. in culture, and it is a difference. It's a making explicit a principle mm -hmm. that I think people implicitly have, but that doesn't always show up in the process of drafting legislation. So if we give people an opportunity to make it explicit, at least my theory or hypothesis is that it will catch on because people will start to see that it's actually useful in clarifying intent of legislation or of introducing the legislation to different committees and actually in following up down the line to say, I know that this legislation was successful because, and I think to your point, it will be valuable, it will create value, and will be worth the time if that's true. And I think that it's wise to not push mm -hmm. that this is mandatory mm -hmm. or even a criteria mm -hmm. that you should do this mm -hmm. if, but rather demonstrate that it's useful and effective mm -hmm. for specific examples like the child care bill. And that's an again, the example that you talk about champions or mm -hmm. people in committees who in effect ask those important questions uh, that encourage other people to think about it. Exactly. The federal government, for example, does do something occasionally that's pretty good. <laughs> and one of the things that they, they have as a requirement from OMB is on every form that has to be filled out by a member of the public, they put on it the amount of time that it takes to do this. Mm -hmm. um, interesting. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I've seen that here in, in state government when we talk about things that we're imposing on people that takes, you know, how long is it going to take to fill this form out? Uh, what expertise? Are they going to have to hire an accountant to help them do it, you know, on some of our finance bills? And then what's that going to cost? And that's killed off a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes That seemed like great ideas to begin with, but right. work. And wasn't it even the tax and regulate bill? What ended up killing that wasn't the marijuana, it wasn't tax and regulate really. It was people started asking the questions of what does this cost the environment? Mm -hmm. What about if we start having more and more programs that are, you know, growing and then all of those things, what is, how much carbon is that mm -hmm. in the system? Mm -hmm. Which I found really interesting is that we started talking about a totally different issue based right. on cost, mm -hmm. but cost to the mm -hmm. environment. So yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's just interesting. When you start asking these questions, you get everyone in the room thinking outside of the box. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really important. Well, and fiscal notes and the set, you know, asking the questions and all of that, that those are just tools right. to help change the culture, to help make people think differently. So all of that, mm -hmm. they're just tools. It's just how to help you apply this new thinking. And I love the idea that the tools that if people want to practice a performance mm -hmm. note, they can come to the Government Accountability Committee and 
perhaps learn how to do it or see an example, mm -hmm. but that it isn't required, right? That what's actually, so if you actually turn your page, um, in the winter, when we talked about that two hour workshop, mm -hmm. where we would um, be bringing both chambers ideally together and we would have more representation than the initial full day, you see that the first bullet point really is about principles. Mm -hmm. And the word establish is maybe not the best word to use here, mm -hmm. but it's the idea that we would be able to ground a conversation in what are our principles mm -hmm. about impact and accountability. What, what, like Senator Brock, what you just offered, I think is a really important. Um, underlying set of, or like a foundation for a dialogue that I think is what we're hoping to have here. And out of that, the second bullet is then can we actually practice applying some tools so that people leave thinking, thinking about something maybe a little bit differently or, wow, yeah, that hunch I've had for a long time that we should be able to measure um, the extent to which these bills we're passing are actually effective within the executive branch or broader than um, I'm not the only one thinking about that. Mm -hmm. And in fact, maybe I could try this performance note thing and see what happens. So with, it, with two hours, we're gonna have a smaller, a briefer amount of time to get through that, which is why I think um, having a more thought-provoking conversation, introduce the tools, but less focus on them than the full day mm -hmm. is gonna mm -hmm. probably go a long way. And then in the convening follow-up, I think as we've kind of already talked about, we're suggesting that um, this is an opportunity for, the, for essentially this community of champions to think together about how do I want to act in my committee? What are the ways in which I'm going to help move my committee along um, that is organic and actually useful and helpful and not sort of prescribed or formulaic? And then what makes sense for the group of people that are now really interested in this and are interested in tools to actually practice in the first, in the, during the session? So again, just as like a high level overview here, we're talking about one full day workshop in the fall, maybe the first week of November, where we're inviting champions to come together. It's about empowering them, it's about building community, it's about making um, a really, a, a learning space for people to actually apply different tools toward the principles of impact and accountability. Then in the winter, when people come back together, we have a two hour mm -hmm. workshop or workshop, yeah, where we would hope that a broader group of people would come, maybe even people or especially people that feel skeptical, mm -hmm. but invite mm -hmm. them in and we'll have a dialogue and also then introduce some of those tools. We'll ask the champions that really came out of that first day to be vocal during this two-hour <coughs> workshop so that they can pitch to their colleagues and it won't just be on you or on me as a facilitator. And then in the winter, follow-up. Of course. I think it's really important to... Um, I, there's a follow-up to Randy's comment that um, in talking about this, that we, when we talk about a performance note, uh, people get very nervous, right? Mm -hmm. and you and you, me. I was, uh, I don't want, I can't do, I can't do one more thing. And there's wine, wine, wine. But if you talk about just kind of the way we approach the issues and the way we approach the bills and the way we think about it. I think that's the the language that we use is going to mm -hmm. either turn mm -hmm. people off mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. invite them to start thinking mm -hmm. in a slightly different way. And so I, um, mm -hmm. I just get really nervous talking about a performance note mm -hmm. and putting putting that on. Mm -hmm. um, but, you yes. know, how would bills be improved or affected if, um, if in every committee somebody asked the question, how will we know whether this works? You know, I mean, I think people obviously have sat through, you know, many discussions on bills and you don't often hear that you, because you're so involved in the detailed language of the bill and Right. When do you do this, and what section does that apply to? And you know, that it's like you step back and you go, "This is all great. This what we want to do here is great, but how are we going to know if it works?" I mean, one question mm -hmm. can change mm -hmm. exact, you know, how all the members think about it. So sit there and just go, "Hmm, how will we know?" Well, well there's also a temptation very mm -hmm. often, and I've seen it in, in government 
in which, well, we'll have a set of measures. Mm -hmm. We'll improve this by 6%, mm -hmm. we'll do this by, and so on. Mm -hmm. And the danger in that is it's like the old adage of, of how do you measure progress in building a house? <laughs> well, we can count the number of nails that were used. We can measure the amount of board feet of lumber installed. <laughs> And it doesn't matter because those aren't really important. Mm -hmm. What's important is, was the, is the kitchen finished and does it work? And mm -hmm. getting a frame of thought around measurement mm -hmm. is also critical. Here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because just having data associated mm -hmm. with the bill is not in and of itself yeah. useful, maybe mm -hmm. counterproductive, mm -hmm. may Just suck resources mm -hmm. rather than add value. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's part of the frame. And even though we're moving away from the language of RBA, which again I think is wise, some of those principles around what do we really want to hold ourselves accountable for? What do we want to be able to talk to taxpayers about? What do we want to be able to really understand? about the way that these things are implemented are much different than how many nails that we use. Right. It's about whether the kitchen works. And mm -hmm. this is that's exactly what got me frustrated when mm -hmm. I was trying to do with the chapter yeah. bill. It was like, but we collect this. And I'm like, but I don't care about that. That's not really that important. Right. What about, right. can we collect this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe that'll help us not collect some stuff we may mm -hmm. find over time falls off the list of mm -hmm. collection, right? Because it doesn't mean that much to anybody. But um, overall, in the end, it is also looking back retrospectively. I know yeah. that this is a process mm -hmm. in Thanks. which we're starting mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. but the end goal of this whole accountability piece is going to be to look back retrospectively mm -hmm. on bills that we passed a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, and knowing that these are the bills we ought to put out of their misery now. <laughs> right, exactly. Because they're eating up resources and not producing right. anything mm -hmm. that's productive. Mm -hmm. And then I don't, we great. don't do that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm thinking, I've been chair for I don't know how many years, and I cannot tell you once when we went back and said, I can't even remember the bills that we passed, much mm -hmm. less go back and look at them and see if they, if they actually worked. So, and when you have, even when you have a chair that's been there for a long time, you don't do it. And if you have a change of chair and a change of members, and how do you, how do you, how do you in a committee, that, that was my, going to be my question about the, um, mm -hmm. the following up on implementation and results. How do you do that when you have a changing body mm -hmm. all the time? Is it up to the administration and then you have a change in administration and they say, yeah, well, we don't care about that one anymore. <laughs> well, related to this, there's been uh, some movement in some quarters to include in bills a sunset mm -hmm. date, which yes. forces right. a relook yes. X number of years down the road. It doesn't mean we, we want to do away with it necessarily. It just means we need to look well, again. Well, it's a rare some bills one. shouldn't be. Some, I mean, we're going to have um, automatic voter registration through license to, through the Department of Motor Vehicles, but we're going to sunset it. I, I wasn't I, I suggesting mean, that every bill yeah. should have a sunset. No, I'm no, just no. saying that so there right. has been a move in the last couple of years mm -hmm. for in, quite intentionally a sunset date added in to force, in, in the view of the, the, the legislature, a need to just take another look X number of years down the road to see if it works or not. And yeah. if it works, we re up the, the issue, whatever it is, <laughs> or not. That's an ideal way to look at it. Usually it's. We'll put a sunset on, and that'll right. give it a chance of passing. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Because there are a lot of people who don't like it, and they say, all right, yeah. well, with a sunset, oh, yeah. we'll have another chance at it. That's exactly so right. not an ideal way to look. It's like, hey, this no, is a chance to get it passed. And then the sunset yeah. comes That's up, and you say, well, we didn't do it yet, so let's That's extend the shot. sunset That's for another for sure. five years. Mm -hmm. Well, there is another option, too. I mean, I think there are plenty of different options, and it might ask you yes. to spend time a little bit differently down the line, which people may want to do or not want to do. But... The oversight committees mm -hmm. are well practiced mm -hmm. in looking at certain measures that are that they expect mm -hmm. from certain departments. Mm -hmm. uh, I know within the Agency of Human <coughs> Services, who become used to needing to bring a suite mm -hmm. of measures before mm -hmm. the oversight committee and talk about how things are going. So I, you know, I know well. I, mean, that I think we're not missing that. I mean, I see bills of judiciary right. all the time. Mm -hmm. but that exactly. operate that way. Mm -hmm. And so of course, some of it seems crazy because one year you have a prison sentence for someone and next year you don't. Right. But yeah. it's like. <laughs> That's right. And Representative Kornheiser, I think, t talked about this a little bit before, but in some ways we're already doing this and it's mm -hmm. just about naming it when we are and then mm -hmm. creating the opportunity to do it more intentionally where we're not. 
or where we are and wish mm -hmm. we were doing more of it. And the oversight committees are a great example of where some of that work is already happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. Frankly, mm -hmm. submitting legislative reports mm -hmm. is another example of this, where you're asked to go intentionally deeper explore mm -hmm. certain areas and then come back with information yeah. and potentially recommendations. Mm -hmm. And so how mm -hmm. legislators actually feel equipped and like they have the capacity to review those reports mm -hmm. may actually be a similar question to how are mm -hmm. we following up on legislative intent. So I think there's opportunities to pull on. And I, and I think that you know the reporting of measures and making that reporting as accessible and easy to, for people to find um, and not have to read through you know, a giant report is you know the use of dashboards and things like that so a committee can look and say oh okay you know the smoking rate among teenagers is going up how can that be didn't we do a bill two years ago to raise the, the age so how can that be so you know by virtue of of trying to understand what the numbers mean and having um uh you know uh, participants come in and testify as to what happened with that bill why didn't it um, make the smoking rate go down. That was the intent of it. So you you do go back and consider mm -hmm. bills. And you consider well, mm -hmm. if we passed that bill two years ago, what was missing from it? Mm -hmm. You know, what didn't we do, or what should we have done, or what could we do now that will actually get um, the result that we had intended in that bill that we passed two years ago. So sure. I think you you do this now, do, but you. Yeah. But, yeah. but we, we just sort of don't don't talk about it. Like yeah. that. Yeah. And, yeah. and there are also reports from the auditor's office right. that, that right. trigger yeah. this kind of right. conversation right. at times. Right. And you know the yeah. recent article and the recent audit about the you know phosphorus in the water is is a good example of how the conversation goes from not everything that you're doing is helping reduce you know you're not spending your dollars well. Ex you know, and the explanations include things like, yes, but the feds require that we spend this much percent of the money on sewer programs, whether they're the most efficient use of the money or not, or, well, we don't, we don't actually know how to measure this, or we're just starting to collect the data to measure this. So, so uh, you know, an audit is, is a way of asking that, those same questions. Well, if you pass that big clean water bill, why isn't it? You know, fixing everything magically. You know, so so um, you're right. That audit is is a good way to bring up the discussion. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the recent audit? No. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. no. That's right. The um, the other thing on the sunsets, I agree mm -hmm. that it's there's some bills you just can't put a sunset on, like the child care bill, because mm -hmm. we talked about that in committee. Like, okay, how do yeah. we make sure we look mm -hmm. at this? Let's sunset it. No, that feels iffy. Like, mm -hmm. do you just say to families, oh, sorry, in three years, mm -hmm. you, you might not right. be here. So instead, what we did is we did a report, um, a one-year report and a two-year report, mm -hmm. but not one that we had, because everybody in the committee was like, I don't want to read another big, long report yeah, that tells yeah. us how much the agency knows, you know, and they just yeah. put a bunch of data there. So instead, we put in there an oral report. We wanted in one year to come in and show us the numbers, and then in two years, a bigger, it would be a little bit more lengthy. But it's sort of on the idea of what you're yeah. asking. Mm -hmm. Like, how mm -hmm. do you look back? How mm -hmm. do you make sure that, right. you know, I'm thinking more that we probably will need to tweak a few things, oh, you know? Mm -hmm. Without doubt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. If we got everything right the back. first time, we'd be out of jobs. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, that would be nice. So, um, so I encourage you to think more about this. This conversation was great. It's already given me ideas of how to emphasize certain language in here and de-emphasize mm -hmm. other language in here. Um, I'd love to be able to sort of debrief with um, Representative Kornheiser and Brumstead and then send back. I'm trying to remember if there will be another chance to s for this group to meet or for us to have another conversation about this before November. I'm sure there must be. You anticipated my question to Betsy Ann. Yeah. Is there a statutory requirement that we get together again? I know we have to do a report, right? Yes, you have to do a report in January. And uh, let's see. 
During adjournment, um, you can meet monthly at the call of the co-chairs and can meet more often, um, subject to a speaker and pro tem approval. Well, so you're already we'll authorized to meet we'll monthly. <laughs> <laughs> it may be worthwhile to have another conversation. I'm yeah. not sure if you'd rather have a conference call than a whole meeting. I don't know what the schedules are, but I'd like to be able to walk through a little bit more content, examples of bills, just so you have a sense of you know, how to anticipate certain conversations if you want to. I think that's a good idea. I would like if we sort of offline, um, a few of us developed um, something resembling a curriculum for that work for that first workshop. Mm -hmm. And then we ran through it with the committee before in advance of the training, okay. as well as a clear um, invitation strategy. Mm -hmm. I agree, Emily. I um, wonder too, logistically, mm -hmm. has the speaker and the president pro tem agreed to this? And do we keep moving and working on this if we're not sure yet? I've been texti texting with Catherine throughout our conversation. And I can do that politely since I'm on the phone with you. Um, <laughs> and she um, said that there hasn't been anything definite outlined for training that first week, um, but there's some panels that need to do some work. And so is looking forward to me sending her um, sort of our final proposal to put something in. By the first week, Emily, which first week do you mean? First week in November, first week of the session? Or the first week of the session. First week of the session. But we also need to get permission to, if we're going to have a lot of legislators come together, that's going right. to be fairly costly for um, mm -hmm. the fiscal budget. impact. For, yeah. um, I mean, we just mm -hmm. we just need to make sure that mm -hmm. they are yep. both in yep. agreement with. Um, I'm happy to check in on that if that works for people. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean? Why not? November? Well, November if we're going thing. to have a full day in November and mm -hmm. have them try and get oh, people right. together, mm -hmm. that you're gonna, mm -hmm. they're gonna have There's to pay a per diem. Yeah. Mileage per diem. Who pays? And does, mileage. Does huh? the House pay for the House and the Senate? Well, there's a legislative budget. Okay. You guys get paid half as much as we do. Oh. <laughs> There's more. Uh, wow. Didn't you know that? <laughs> and the chairs are more comfortable in the Senate. Too. So should we <laughs> should we try to pick a November date? Yeah, yeah. Be I, more more comfortable. Comfortable. I think before we leave, we probably ought to settle on a date in November. I think so too. Yeah, I think yes. for the full day. As long as we're here, because <laughs> then we can uh, get that letter out from. No, I look the first week, and I'm out the sixth, seventh, and eighth. Okay. And Tuesday. Available Monday and Tuesday. What's that mean? Yeah. Of the first week in November. Oh, first, that's my schedule. I first week in November. Hanging so we're, on me. We're looking at the week of the fourth. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we're calling mm -hmm. the first yeah. week, first full week. Correct. Mm -hmm. Election. I have election day as the fifth. What do we that's do? Correct. We don't have an election this year. Not this year. We don't, but I just wondered if, is there anything we should be helping our towns with? There's, yeah, there's some, our locals might be having yeah, some. Yeah, the BCA. Yeah, but don't they do that in town yeah, meeting? They used March. to do that in March. Town meeting. They, well, yeah. some yeah. things come up in November. Yes. Well, no, it just depends on the town. Yeah. 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 Maybe a school board meeting or something. Okay. I don't know. We don't have any. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there a particular day of the week that works? <clears throat> Not just for our group, but. Well, if Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are out. Of that weekend. No, I no, think Wednesday is Tuesday's good. Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday. except unless, unless certain towns have unless there's an election, election issue. Certain I don't towns. think that there is for me at least. I don't no. know. I don't have any. Okay, that's fine. I just okay. want to check to see if there's anything. Okay. So what day is it? Tuesday the fifth. And so you're putting that down for the whole day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. And who's being invited to that? That was later. Yeah. Anybody wants to Any interested legislator, particularly people that have already expressed an interest in this type of work. And I think Emily, Representative Kortenheiser wanted to talk about invitation strategy, so I'm not sure. I think there may be some thought to put into who can invites come from, who should they definitely go to. How do we want to frame it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which gets to our needing to talk right. beforehand and get this all mm -hmm. put in shape. But do we want to do a mark your calendar or something? I'm worried yeah, that people day. need right. time. Save yeah, day. save the day. Yeah. yeah. What time does it start? Thing here. What time? Like 10. 10? 9? 
I think we could do like a nine to. Well, if people are traveling, maybe it's better to do ten. Ten worked out pretty well. Ten to three. Because it gets dark three. so early in November right. too. Jeepers. Mm -hmm. Most cars with headlights now, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about the, the windshield wipers. <laughs> windshield Can you do it in ten? To I think we could so do ten to three. Ten I mean, we'll three. Do, we'll we'll work with whatever time we yeah. have. Right. Okay. Ten to three. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then when when you you folks uh, Drew and Jessica and Emily need time to work on this business. Mm -hmm follow up from today, mm -hmm. when would be a proper time for the, this full committee then to revisit mm -hmm. in anticipation of the fifth? I think it would be wise to leave time to make changes in case this committee has any recommendations for things that should definitely change. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking sometime in October would yeah. be a good time for us to all get back together. Mm -hmm. And then we can look to August and September for our own mm -hmm. work. How about if you want to go to Tuesdays, October 15th? I'm not available that whole week. How about the 22nd? Yay. Mm -hmm. That's only oh, a week right. before. That's Thanksgiving week. Oh, that's isn't only it? a week before October. Right? October. No, 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 October. No, oh, sorry. October. October. That's October. Right. I guess it's <laughs> two weeks <laughs> before the event. Uh, up in that corner of the state, they it may, celebrate it. They have a lot more to get thanks for. Why we have more than that Tuesday? Okay. Did we try for Fridays? And why did we? Is there a reason we're starting with Tuesdays? I don't no, not we're particularly. Not Tuesday because we only had something on. Just that okay. week. Just that week. Just that that one one week. Would you rather have a Friday, Emily? I would really much appreciate Friday. Okay. I don't schedule meet, work meetings on those days, so they tend to not require as much rearranging. So the Fridays there would be eighteen twenty-five. Can I can I ask that the eighteenth be not considered? That's. Uh, yeah. I got it down for an F and uh, F35, F35 arrival. F35 arrival that day. Yeah, just two right. Day, oh boy, two days. Yeah, yeah, F35 and that? also the government <laughs> accountability, uh, the uh, joint IT oversight committee meeting is that mm -hmm. day, the 18th. 25th? 25th. 25th works for me. Is that enough okay. in advance? So we do it yep. in the morning. Uh, is that possible? Too? I think that would be fine. Enough I think, time. Yeah, 10 a.m. again would be good. 10 to to 12 max. Yeah, I don't think we're going to need one to go on. So we've got the time. So that is Friday a gag meeting. So, no, Friday the 12th, 25th of October. October. At 10 o'clock. And then 11.5 is, what are we going to call that? Workshop 1? Yeah, workshop prep. Yeah. Yeah. 10 is 10 to 10 o'clock. Yeah, sorry. So do we need to um, drop some, well, I wonder if we should have a conversation sooner, though, about the the invite strategy and the framing so that yep. we can get to save the data out sooner. What's the invite strategy? What's that? Who, who, who do you invite and how to? So we just sort of invite. 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 Yeah. Can, can I make a proposal that um, yes. Drew, Jessica, and I work on that and just sort of send it around for comments? And if anyone has any comments, they can just reply via email. Sure. But right. in terms of who to, it. Uh, who to invite, I, I every, yeah. understand I thought the framing. The whole who? committee definitely for the November fifth. I mean, the whole committee and the entire legislature would be invited. Did I understand that well, wrong? It, every I would say everyone would be invited, but um, how we want to describe who might want to in come. I mean, of course, everyone's invited, but um, there might be some people that we want to invite personally. We might, you know. Like the how we want to highlight particular pieces of it, how we might want to describe what it means to have attended and what responsibilities might look like in the future, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But it's everybody. Um, who does the inviting? The gap. Do we? Okay. I w yeah, I would think that it would go out under uh, Senator Colmore and Representative Townsend's name mm -hmm. as <laughs> chair. Let me hinder attendance. <laughs> I just wonder if the speaker and the president. I was thinking the same thing. Might be nice. You got a little added weight there. Yeah. Okay. That would occasion a conversation for me with. Okay. Senate Pro Tem. Mm hmm So maybe in shorter order, the three of us can talk about just pull together some language yeah. that you could use. Um, <laughs> that we could potentially send out to this whole group just for 
make sure that you approve mm -hmm. of it at least as a next step. And then if there are conversations to have with the pro tem or the speaker about their interest in that invitation coming from them, those could be had around the same time. Mm -hmm. The mark your calendar maybe should come from you guys just yeah. so we can get it out quick. Well, well uh, again, not before I, there's conversations. Right. I need to have a con leadership. conversation with Senator Ashford. Yeah. Yeah. That would true. kind of be inappropriate if you saw the date yeah. and said, wait a minute, yeah. what are you yeah. doing? Yeah. yeah, so maybe we can do that sooner rather than later. That's so would you folks talk yeah first and we might <clears throat> in terms of the all the November meeting I was just thinking we don't know what else might be scheduled for that day okay. we might have to be somewhat flexible oh, if, if there mm -hmm. are I mean if uh, mm -hmm. so they have the speaker and the pro time have scheduled something else or there's mm -hmm. other right five other committees meeting that that day. Yeah. So, um, in that case, I mean, you would find out when you talk to, and I don't know who keeps track of the, um, the committee, the summer study. I don't know why I call them that, but. I think Catherine keeps track of that, but I couldn't be wrong. And probably Peter Sterling on our side. Keep track of the. Yeah, dates. I would think he has some. Because we only know the ones that we're right. involved in. Okay. Okay. So it seems like there's some logistics still to figure out, but there's definitely some content to work on too. Mm -hmm. So as a follow-up from this, you can expect to see some draft email mm -hmm. for maybe a save the date that we can send whenever we're ready, but at least we'll have it, describing what it is, who we think should particularly attend, clarifying it's open for everybody. Um, and then we'll plan in the October meeting to go over in more detail the actual content for what we'll be working on, what we'll be presenting, mm -hmm. and the different um, examples of legislative language that we'll use. And I think we struck a date for the um, winter two-hour one. Mm -hmm. First week of January. Oh, one so yeah. nine. Was that? One nine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the nine or eight. morning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, nine. that's the uh, Thursday. Yeah. yeah. The date nine. of the state of the Thursday. state. And we said 9.30? There's a 9. Oh, 9.30, I think I did. Couldn't be earlier than that. We'll all be. I mean, well, in the we'll be people, here. At least it's committee. a Thursday. Yeah. I mean, earlier or later. Would right committees still. be likely to be already meeting on that Thursday? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Probably, yes. So it should either be early or, or later. later morning. Mm -hmm. but ten, ten to not right in the middle. Be. What's that? 10 to noon, maybe, because the committees, some committees just start earlier, like 8, 30. Yeah, yeah. Gives them a chance to, you know, half hour, one hour meeting doesn't cut it for them. Mm -hmm. uh, 10 o'clock. Why don't we, maybe we should wait on picking a final time for that while we talk to Peter and Catherine, because they might already have a sense um, or, want, or be willing to hold times for us in sort of a larger schedule that's being set up. <coughs> yeah. So just settle on the date, but not the time? Yeah, and ask for their advice about time. Okay. Yeah. January 9th. It's okay. the same day as the um, state, state of state. state. Okay. Are there any other issues or topics people want to bring up? What's the report that we have to do? Is that something else oh, we need good, to be good working question. on? <laughs> Betsy Ann can help us. Sure. You have a report due annually by January 15th, and the statute says that GAC is to report its activities with recommendations uh, to the General Assembly. And that's just basic yeah. summary. Okay. So we can talk about this? It could be really short. We did it last uh -huh. year. We do it every year. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That can be part of that October yeah. mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. That'll definitely put that together mm -hmm. with the others. That'll take up two hours mm -hmm. yeah. for sure and be a good use of those two hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Both topics. Anything else, Betsy Ann? Can you think of anything? I don't think so. Nope. So uh, we have one thing that we um, have to do for our outcomes reporting. I'm just going to go with it for this um, September's report was that the way we worded that indicator on the economy, we thought we were asking for the unemployment rate, 
but the way we worded it was unemployment rate per thousand residents. And we got oh. that really wacky number from labor because the unemployment rate includes more than just residents, okay, meaning legal residents yeah. of Vermont. So um, um, we do need to reword that. And although we don't put that in statute, we do have DAC agree to it. So you and I can talk about that and maybe we can just take two minutes to consider that on in October. Okay. <clears throat> Okay.